Hi, guys. Please be seated. Guys, please be seated. Yes. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And be serious, be seated and be serious, please. Uh, Martina, can you close the door, please? <laughs> yes. Do we have enough place? Do we have enough seats? Okay. Welcome. So many familiar faces, so many famous names. Welcome to our meeting number 200, stop <laughs> clapping, 297 to our Toastbusters, the best club ever. Sorry, <laughs> guys. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, welcome to our club. Do ev does everybody know what Toastmasters is about? I'm going to say a few, <laughs> a few words if you don't know. Okay, um, the first club was started uh, back to 1924. So this year, try to guess, we have an anniversary. One thousand, not thousand, why I love thousand? <laughs> uh, One hundredth anniversary. So let's float. Uh, and um, for me personally, I love this club. I love this community because of the people, like like-minded people, very active, very progressive. And I really. Mm, meet everybody here, you know, we um, hug, we kiss, we are doing all this fun stuff. <laughs> and um, if you would like to grow as a person even, join our club <laughs> or any club, of course, in our community, because any club, I guarantee, wonderful, really, with wonderful people, uh, where you can learn how to be great public speaker, how to grow again as a person, how to build uh, self-awareness, self-confidence, uh, whatever, and uh, public speaking again and leadership skills too. So, and before we start our meeting, uh, I would like to recognize any guests we have here tonight. We have a lot of guests, I suppose. So please, we have a tradition, uh, every newcomer come on stage and uh, introduce yourself by saying your name, why you're here, what are you doing, and uh, whatever you want us to know about you. So please, I can see new people here. Please come on stage, Ivan, you also, because you're the, for the first time here, Natalia also. Yes, of course, come here. I don't know, don't be shy. So, what is your name, and etc. Hello, old. My name is Ivan. I am uh, I am a techno mage. <laughs> I'm IT guy, and I am speaker. I had TEDx talk, and this year I had a goal to improve my English and to make content in English. So that's why I'm here. Hello, my name is Natalie, and I came here today because Ivan invite, uh, invited me. As you all know, today is St. Valentine's Day, and uh, this is a kind of our romantic date today. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is why I'm here. <laughs> And and yes, and we uh, we brought cupcakes uh, with chocolate. If you want, please enjoy. <laughs> Hello, everyone. 
Good evening. My name is Alina Schadulina. I'm from uh, Moscow Free Speakers Club. Um, and I very appreciate to be here with you uh, to take part in Toastbusters meeting. So thank you so much for inviting me. Hello, everyone. My name is Tana. Uh, I'm also a member of uh, Moscow Free Toastmaster Club. Free Speakers Club, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and I'm invited here for participate today's meeting. And I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Be seated and enjoy our meeting. Uh, yeah, yeah, in the wrong place. <laughs> uh, so, what are uh, two reminder? Just kind reminder. Please check your phone and put it on um, silent mode. And uh, also, if you don't want to be photographed, say it now, report it now. Otherwise, we are going to take photos and videos <laughs> during our meeting. Do you have any questions, maybe? No? Okay, let's get started. Yes, we have, but I'm going to tell about it at the end of our meeting. So I would like to ask our Toastmaster of the day, Samira Dostar, come on stage and be our guest. <laughs> Samira, the stage is yours. Thank you. Can you turn on the presentation? <laughs> Since uh, today is uh, St. Valentine's Day, uh, 14th of February, uh, I was thinking about uh, the topic related to love. Uh, so, uh, the topic of our meeting is uh, love traditions across uh, the globe. Today we will embark on the exploration not just of places, but of the human heart itself, as we discover the myriad ways love is celebrated, sought after, and immortalized across our beautiful planet. Love, uh, an emotion, so profound and universal, manifests itself in countless forms and traditions around the world. It is force that knows no boundaries, flourishing in the most unexpected places and bringing people together in a shared experience of affection, commitment, and longing. So, yeah. <laughs> So uh, let uh, us begin the journey with open hearts and uh, curious minds ready to be inspired by the global tapestry of love traditions. Who knows, perhaps uh, you will find a new traditions to adopt um, as your own or simply marvel at the creativity and depth of feeling that uh, love inspires in people everywhere. So the next slide. Uh, who knows this spot? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it, it is uh, one of the most uh, popular tourist attractions uh, in Italy, Trevi Fontaine. And experts estimate that uh, an average of 1,200 people visit this place during one hour. Can you imagine <laughs> this? So it means that from seven to 10 million people um, visit uh, this uh, place uh, annually. And uh, what tradition do you think is associated with this place? Harry no, <laughs> no. Yes, who said this? Yeah, uh, how many? If, uh, yeah. If you would like to attract love, how many coins you should throw into the fountain? <laughs> no. R R Russian credit card that doesn't work abroad. <laughs> uh, so, 
Sorry, I didn't hear. <laughs> okay, uh, the next slide. Here is the answer. So if you throw uh, one coin, uh, it guarantees a repeat visit to Rome. If you throw two coins, <laughs> it means that you uh, will meet your love. Uh, and if you throw three coins, uh, it uh, promises uh, a wedding. So uh, this is traditional part of the legend and uh, there is extension. Uh, if you throw four coins, uh, it means um, it guarantees prosperity and money. And uh, if you <laughs> throw one more coin, uh, it means that uh, you might want to break up <laughs> with someone. <laughs> so if you... If you cannot uh, decide whether you want to break up or not, you can <laughs> visit uh, this uh, fountain and um, throw five coins. Um, okay, the next slide. And uh, the funds uh, collected from uh, the fountain estimated to be over a thousand euros per day, uh, and they are used for the charity. And uh, over the last uh, year, 2023, uh, tourists threw a record 1.6 million euros uh, into Trevi Fountain. Can you imagine this amount of money? I don't know, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Uh, so I also visited uh, Trevi Fontaine uh, this January, and but I, I will not tell you how many coins I threw uh, into the Fontaine. Let it be a secret. So the next slide. Uh, the next uh, spot, uh, uh, Juliet Statue, is also located uh, in uh, Verona, in Italy, uh, but the city is Verona. So, uh, can you guess um, what uh, a tourist or visitor should do to attract love? Yes, touch, but what part? <laughs> so, uh, Ekaterina, can you show the next slide? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is the uh, uh, it is uh, the right breast. So yes, only the right breast. Yes. So uh, the tradition involves touching uh, the right breast for good luck and love, and many people also leave um, uh, notes with their wishes and declarations of love in the courtyard. And uh, you uh, all know the story of Romeo and uh, Juliet, uh, despite it, it, uh, its tragic end. And uh, despite this, uh, this spot um, uh, has turned into a symbol of um, eternal love and uh, the magic of finding one's true uh, soulmate. So the next slide. Uh, so now we are moving to Ireland. I don't know how it is pronounced because I didn't check. Uh, maybe it's Blarney Stone, right? Bl Blarney, okay. Blarney Stone. Yes, and uh, it is a block of uh, limestone built uh, into the battlements of uh, Blarney Castle. Uh, the next slide. <laughs> Yeah, I was surprised as you. <laughs> uh, can you imagine uh, what uh, she, this woman is going to do? Uh, what? <laughs> you can say out loud <laughs> if you know. No, uh, the next slide. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this woman uh, was going to kiss uh, this stone. Yes, and kissing this stone is said to give the kisser the gift of eloquence and persuasive flattery. And for lovers, this can translate into the ability to charm their partner or express their feelings more eloquently. So... <laughs> 
uh, when I was reading about these traditions, I thought maybe we shouldn't uh, visit uh, Toastmasters meetings. We should <laughs> kiss uh, this stone and uh, we will speak more eloquently. But this is just a joke. Uh, <laughs> don't pay attention to this. Uh, okay, the next slide. Uh, so we are moving to Asia, to Japan. And um, here is Tanabata Festival. Um, it is based on a Chinese legend. Uh, Tanabata Festival celebrates the um, annual meeting of um, Arihimi and uh, Hikaboshi. I don't know how to pronounce these names in Japanese. Uh, so... <laughs> Okay, yeah, uh, these are names of uh, two lovers uh, separated uh, by uh, Milky Way, and uh, they are allowed uh, to meet just once a year uh, on the seventh day of um, the seventh lunar month. Uh, can you show the next slide? So uh, people uh, celebrate uh, this day by writing wishes, uh, often related to love and happiness, uh, on small pieces of paper that uh, you can see on the slide. And these uh, pieces of papers uh, called uh, Tanzaku, or, or I don't know how to <laughs> pronounce them, them. and then uh, they hang uh, these pieces of papers uh, on uh, bamboo trees. And uh, the festival symbolizes uh, the power of love, love to overcome obstacles and uh, the hope uh, that the true love will find um, a way to reunite. And uh, I, think, I think that uh, we will stop here for a while and then continue after the prepared speech. Yes, and now I would like to invite to our virtual stage uh, Yekaterina Shulakova with her uh, speech, which is called Embracing Failure, the Fuel for Creative Exploration. And the project is writing a speech with purpose. So welcome on stage, Yekaterina. Let's applaud. <laughs> Thank you. Can you hear me? Sorry? Can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. We can hear. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, fellow Toastmasters and esteemed guests, picture this. You are on a journey towards a goal fueled by passion and determination, but suddenly you stumble upon an obstacle, a failure. How do you react? Do you retreat in defeat or do you embrace it as an opportunity for growth? Today, I want to share with you the reasons why embracing failure is not only essential, but also serves as a catalyst for creative exploration. Firstly, let's redefine failure. Too often it's seen as a dead end, a setback, but what if I told you that it's merely a stepping stone on the path to success? Failure isn't about uh, falling short. It's about learning, evolving, and pushing boundaries. It's about recognizing that every stumble is a chance to rise stronger, wiser, and more resilient. Consider some of uh, history's greatest innovators, uh, from Thomas Edison to Steve Jobs. They didn't achieve success overnight, uh, quite the contrary. They faced countless failures along the way. Edison even uh, famously said, I haven't failed, I just uh, found 10,000 ways that won't work. Each failure provided invaluable insights, uh, propelling them closer to, uh, to their ultimate breakthroughs. As proof, I want to remind you five well-known inspiring examples. And the first one is John Rowling, uh, the author of the immensely popular Harry Potter series. Uh, she faced numerous rejections from publishers, 
before finding success. Uh, as a struggling single mother, uh, she uh, faced uh, poverty, uh, battled depression, and despite all these challenges, uh, Rowling persisted in her writing, pouring uh, her heart and soul into the magical world of Hogwarts. And finally, her perseverance paid off when the first Harry Potter chapter eventually uh, was published uh, and launched a global phenomenon that touched the lives of dozens of readers, uh, mi uh, excuse me, millions of readers worldwide. Uh, the second example is Colonel Sanders, the founder of Kentucky Fried uh, Chicken, KFC, uh, who also faced financial ruin multiple times and struggled to find uh, the right business venture. However, Sanders refused to give up on his dream to spread uh, this famous recipe of fried chicken. Uh, and uh, it wasn't uh, until he was in his 60s uh, that he found success uh, with KFC, which uh, became one of the most, uh, most iconic fast food chains in the world. Uh, the next example is Vincent van Gogh, uh, who is the most influential, influential artist of all time. Uh, he struggled with mental, mental illness and also financial hardship throughout his life. Uh, despite facing rejection and criticism from the art establishment, uh, Van Gogh remained dedicated to his craft, uh, creating 2,000 uh, art pieces uh, in his lifetime. Despite selling only several of them, uh, Van Gogh uh, posthumous fame skyrocketed, and today his vibrant art, vibrant uh, paintings are celebrated uh, around the world. Uh, the next example is Michael Jordan, uh, who is widely regarded as one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Uh, he uh, was cut from his uh, school basketball team. His skills, uh, his determination paid off. And as we all know, for the court, uh, and finally, Steve Jobs, uh, a co-founder of Ape, uh, Apple, uh, who also experienced numerous failures and setbacks throughout his career. Uh, he was ousted from his own company and faced criticism for his leadership styles uh, and was criticized for his business decisions. However, uh, Jobs never lost sight of his vision of in for innovation and design excellence, and as we all know, uh, he trans transformed the company into one of the most valuable and infl inflational tech giants in the world. Uh, these individual stories illustrate the power of resilience, determination, and perseverance in overcoming obstacles. One, two, three, am I here? One, two, three. Similarly, we must embrace failure as, as a classroom, extracting lessons that guide us toward. In conclusion, I would like to say that failure isn't something to, to be afraid uh, or avoid it. Uh, it isn't a reflection of our worth. It's just a natural part of our journey uh, it's something to be embraced and celebrated. So the next time you encounter failure, and you will, just remember this. It's not the end of the road. It's just the beginning of a new chapter filled with infinite possibilities. Fellow Toastmasters, let's embrace failure as our ally, as our, ally our teacher, and our great, greatest source of inspiration. Thank you.
uh, it is said that swimming around uh, the rock uh, brings eternal beauty and true love. And the sight draws couples from around the world seeking the blessings of love and attraction. Next slide. Uh, the next one you know very well, I think. No? <laughs> Who uh, have visited uh, the Moscow Bridge, the Pedlock Tree Park? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I thought everyone was there. Okay. So, uh, the dozens of trees uh, symbolize a couple's eternal love in marriage. When a couple uh, gets married, uh, they write uh, their names uh, on a padlock, which is often uh, the shape uh, of a heart. Lock it to some free space on uh, one of the metal tree frames and uh, toss uh, the key into the river. Uh, although their practice is uh, common in many other countries, the iron uh, trees that lovers affix their lock to make a Moscow bridge of love a unique and romantic site. The next slide. Uh, the next uh, spot is similar to uh, the previous one, but uh, it is located in South Korea. Uh, it is similar to the padlock tree park in Moscow because um, couples place um, padlocks on the fence at the end seal tower to symbolize their lasting love. Uh, the tower and its surroundings offer a beautiful view of the city, making it a popular spot for romantic gestures. The next one. And uh, this is uh, one of my favorite spots. Uh, I have never been there, but maybe one day I will visit uh, Taiwan. Uh, it is called uh, the Lover's Bridge. Um, and it is a popular spot for couples because of its beautiful sunset views. And uh, the bridge looks like um, a sailboat and is even more beautiful when the sun sets. The golden light of the setting sun um, makes everything look romantic. People believe that watching this sunset together makes their relationship stronger and fills it with love. It is a special tradition for many couples who come to enjoy this beautiful moment. So the next slide. And the last one, uh, Love Sculptures by Robert Indiana in New York City, USA. Um, uh, maybe someone visited this place, no? Okay. And uh, the tradition uh, is um, to take a photo with iconic uh, love sculptures. And it has become a modern romantic uh, tradition for couples visiting these cities. It uh, symbolizes finding love in the everyday and celebrating it uh, in um, urban settings. So this is all. <laughs> I think, uh, thank you. I, I hope that uh, you uh, found something new for yourself and uh, enjoyed uh, exploring these traditions. And now we are moving to the evaluation part of our Toastmasters meetings. And um, I would like to invite uh, to the virtual stage uh, the the evaluator of Ekaterina's speech, uh, George Perelman. Let's applaud. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. My old fashioned video. <laughs> So, dear Yekaterina, I'd like to tell that your speech was uh, well prepared and it was really interesting. You started from question uh, which attracts our attention and it was really helpful to, to grab our, our interest. And uh, then you delivered all information 
it was again prepared and um, I really love it. I suggest you to make some pauses between between uh, parts meanings to to uh, give us time to understand. Because as, as for me, I didn't get some information because I could, I, uh, some words, it's, it's just my. Okay. Okay. Unfortunately, yes. But anyway, let's continue. To, um... Now we have yes. Uh, now we have a small break. Uh, five minutes. minutes. Well, I guess fifteen. Minutes. Yes, fifteen. Fifteen minutes. So we have a break. Yes. Guys, let's get started. Be seated. Are you ready, guys? <laughs> So now we are proceeding with the evaluation contest uh, in English, which is held annually. And I would like to invite uh, the contest chair of the um, evaluation contest, Anastasia Gribinuk. Thank you very much. Uh, dear friends, as you can uh, see, something changed here in this room. And uh, to be more exact, uh, we have our participants. That means that now we are going to have uh, our evaluation contest. And uh, let me uh, tell you a little bit more about this wonderful contest. Uh, now we have a club level, so the winners of this contest uh, will be able to present uh, this club uh, uh, on the area contest in the end of March and uh, if somebody wins there uh, he or she will uh, continue with the division contest so it's a very important uh, event uh, and um, what the evaluation contest is about now we will listen to our test speaker and uh, he or she will present uh, a speech uh, which will uh, uh, be from five to seven minutes and uh, the participants will uh, listen to this speech and uh, then uh, they will uh, be invited uh, to to the room and they will prepare uh, the uh, evaluation and one by one we will see these evaluations uh, here on the stage uh, so uh, I would like also to introduce our uh, contest team uh, first of all our chief judge uh, Daniel Neil Zaharov. And I have a question for you. Uh, has the judge team been briefed? Great. I would like also to add that all the contestants have been briefed. And um, then I would like to introduce our sergeant at arms. It's Ekaterina Dimova. 
So Yekaterina will uh, play a very important role today. Uh, she will look at uh, after the uh, participants. Uh, and uh, also I should mention that as it's evaluation contest, so you will evaluate the same speech. All the participants after the speech will uh, should leave the room. Uh, so, and you will prepare out of this room. It's very important. Uh, then uh, I would like to introduce our timer team. We have two timers today. It's uh, Tatiana Avchinikova and Ivan Karatev. So, <laughs> please welcome our timer team. Uh, it's one, one of the important uh, person of uh, of this meeting because, uh, as you know, the contest is not an uh, ordinary meeting because uh, we have disqualifications here. I hope that we won't have any disqualification, but uh, it's important not to have it. And uh, please, uh, all the participants uh, pay attention at the time rules. So evaluation contest should be from two to three minutes. And uh, the contest contestant will be disqualified if the speech is less than one minute, 30 seconds, or more than three minutes, uh, 30 seconds. So if you see the red card, and uh, you should uh, stop immediately your evaluation, because after three minutes, 30 seconds, timer won't wave the, way, the red card, so the disqualification will be immediate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, you can, I, I guess you can change right now, yeah, to, to be more um, to vis visible, yes, for, for, for the participants. Well, uh, now let's uh, have a small rehearsal. I will uh, call on stage our test speaker, but uh, how it will be. So I name the test speaker, I name the speech, then the speech and the test speaker. And after the first, uh, after I name it for the first time, he or she, uh, you clap as loud as possible. And uh, then when I introduce for the second time, it will be silence in the audience and the test speaker starts its speech. So let's have a rehearsal with Ekaterina Dimova. Ekaterina Dimova, the best contest speech. The best contest speech, Ekaterina Dimova. Silence. Okay, thank you very much, Ekaterina. And uh, dear Toastmasters and guests, are you ready for the contest? So let me introduce our test speaker, Lisa Kondrashova, Lessons Learned. Lessons learned, Lisa Kondrashova. Hello, everyone, dear Toastmasters, dear friends, dear guests, and dear evaluators. I'm really happy and excited to be here with you tonight. Why? Because in my opinion, and I think it's very relevant to Toastmasters, the constructive feedback Receiving it and applying it is the best way to progress, the best way forward. So I'm really happy to, and looking forward to listening to your evaluations, as I've said. And today, my speech is also about how receiving and applying some feedback in my life happened, uh, helped me to develop, helped me to go forward with my professional and personal life. The first one being my primary school teacher. I'm forever grateful to her because she was actually the first person who gave me a positive outlook on myself, positive outlook from outside. I remember that at the time when I was little, when I was just like 10 or uh, 11 years of age, I was not very keen to on making an effort doing something because everything was very easy to me. And I remember my teacher coming up to me 
in the school hall, talking to me and saying, Lisa, listen, you are very talented. You're very smart. You're very quick-witted and bright. But I've noticed that you've stopped doing any effort. You're not doing anything. You're not applying your talents properly. And at the time, I was just like very skeptical and just thinking, yeah, yeah, sure, keep talking. Yeah, of course, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't pay attention at the time. And only a couple of years later, like I think when I became a teenager, I understood what she actually meant because I had set a, a goal for myself. I had a goal of entering one particular university and I was very focused on that goal. And I started working a lot, taking, started making a lot of effort. And then, only then I remembered the words of my primary school teacher. And actually, thanks to that, I succeeded. I got to the university I've always wanted to get to. And that leads me to the second person that influenced me, gave me a feedback that helped me to progress in life. Be, uh, that was my uh, university teacher, university professor, who I refer to as Sensei because for a long time, he was an ambassador of Russian Federation to Japan. Uh, at one point in time, he was a vice minister of foreign affairs of Russian Federation. So he had a lot of merits, a lot of awards. He was quite a decorated person, but he never was bragging about it. He was just always quite humble and very positive towards everyone, very accepting towards everybody. That was the first of the lesson that I've learned from him. But second, the second one that I value much more was the fact that he was always uh, talking about everyone, starting with positive, highlighting the positives, uh, highlighting the successes of the person he was talking to. And then, only then, he was talking about the points that can be improved. And I remember at the time I've met him, I was quite, I had a negative outlook. I was constantly critiquing myself, constantly critiquing everyone. But mostly I was really harsh on myself. And I remember that he was always making sure that I focus on the positive, focus on what I'm strong at. And that was quite a valuable lesson for me that I still very grateful for to him. And now, right now, I'm working as a professor in the very same university. Uh, it is my part-time job, but still, I'm, um, I started working not so long ago, like a couple of years ago. And as a teacher, as a university professor, I'm always trying to make sure that I give fair evaluation to my students. How do I do that? How do I succeed? Uh, well, at the time when I started, like four years ago, I was always making sure that, again, the way my professor told, taught me, I was apply, uh, firstly highlighting the positives, highlighting the successes of my students, and only then giving them some points that can be improved, what they can work on. So in a way, I would say that I was doing it Toastmasters way, way before I joined Toastmasters. And actually, afterwards, after each course, when I started, like four, four years ago, I'm asking my students to do the same for me. I'm asking them to give me the feedback, give me the evaluation. Prior to handing out them their credits, I'm asking them to tell me what did they like during the course, what was useful for them, what I succeeded in, and also asking what was not so useful, what can be left out next year I'm teaching. And actually, actually, it was feedback of one of my students when he was requiring for more detailed lectures, uh, more 
uh, materials that I would give them that encouraged me to be better at my speaking, to be better at my lectures, and to prepare them more properly. So that's why, actually, I joined Toastmasters, because I wanted to, to become better at the lectures that I'm giving them. I'm quite confused, um, <laughs> but all right. So all in all, I would say that these are only a couple of examples when people that I've met along the way gave me some feedback, I applied it, and I became better. And the lessons I've learned thanks to them. I'm forever grateful to them. So now, as I've said, I would be very happy to hear your evaluation once again and apply it, it in, in future. So good luck to you and thank you in advance. Thank you, Lisa. So now we will start our evaluation and uh, please, dear uh, participants, uh, you should uh, come with Yekaterina. And uh, as you reach this room, you will have five minutes to prepare your speech. And now I guess we should wait for our dear contestants because we don't have any improvisation session right now during the contest. Yeah, let's applaud. It was a wonderful speech. <laughs> I guess yes. With speaker, okay. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, try to speak English, not French. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's easier for me to speak English, sometimes even easier than speaking Russian, I guess. I understood that for me it's easier to speak French than English, yeah. but uh, we are not testing the Google Translator here, so we will speak English to be understood. And uh, I have a question for you. Uh, tell a little bit more about your teaching experience, because it's wonderful that you have this kind of experience even at the university. Yeah, um, well, I started kind of accidentally, as I <laughs> would say, uh, it was during my PhD studies, uh, thanks to my uh, university supervisor, which is I also referred to, I was talking about him, Sensei. Uh, and yeah, it was kind of like slow start because I was not ready right away. But later and later, I understood and understood that um, it was such a rewarding experience. It was so great to communicate with my students, just uh, trying to understand what are their needs, uh, what do they need to succeed and to be successful in future, in the future. Uh, that I think now, I look looking back, I think that I actually that experience influenced my life in a lot more ways than I ever thought. Because now I can kind of switch my career. I'm working in the sphere of education, not only as a teacher, because I'm only kind of a guest, guest teacher right now at the university. I'm working in an in international uh, organization, but uh, my projects are also in the field of education and applying technology uh, in the sphere of education. That's also what I'm trying to do with my students during the classes. So just like all of this kind of merged into one career of mine, what I, I would say so, yeah. Great experience. And uh, with uh, what countries uh, are you, do you have interaction right now? Um, what countries? So uh, like I work in the UN system, so 
mainly like main focus of the UN is just uh, we have a priority Africa. That's kind of the first, like it's so just like one of the goals. But overall, I would say that, um, yeah, I also have project with uh, Taiwan, Vietnam, uh, where else China. China is a, like a really big investor and collaborator with UNESCO. So there are a lot of pro uh, projects that are very exciting and very interesting to, to be part of. So yeah, it's just like global scale and um, yeah, mainly it's just like to be applied in every country of the world because right now technology and artificial intelligence are a big part of education and just like we are making sure that it is used ethically and that it, it, it is beneficial for the students and for the teachers, not harmful for them. Uh, as um, we know, you are a French-speaking person. So uh, some interesting questions. Uh, does uh, the French language help you to uh, interact with the African countries? Because in Africa, there are a lot of French-speaking countries, like our favorite country, Côte d'Ivoire. And uh, do you use it uh, while working? Well, actually, yeah, like the second language of my organization is actually, well, first is English, second is French, and just like four other UN languages are also used, but not so often. But I would say that just like for the most of it, I'm using mainly English, uh, which is quite regretful. And that is actually, that's the reason why I joined the uh, Autour du Mou, uh, the, the club, um, uh, Toastmasters club, um, French speaking club because I wanted to practice French more often and unfortunately I don't have that opportunity all the time. We have it every week so little advertisement of our French speaking club if you speak French come every Friday we have meetings every Friday and it's in person and it's awesome French speaking uh, skills. Yeah. Uh, maybe, I don't know, one more question. What is the biggest challenge in your work? What is the biggest challenge in my work? Well, yeah, that's a, mm, that's a good question. Well, I think it's just like, like in most of the work projects, I think I have quite a good life-work balance in here. So that doesn't qualify. It's not a, a challenge for me. Um, I think that, yeah, like really right now, just frankly speaking, I, I feel like I really, in, I'm really enjoying my work, what I'm doing. And just like, I'm, I like the people, I like my team I'm working with. I like like the international cooperation. I love that it's uh, education sphere because I, I understand that I'm really, really excited about it. And yeah, maybe it's not, not a bad thing to say, but just like not very, I don't know, just not very use, usual to, to tell that, yeah, actually everything is fine. I'm enjoying my work uh, quite a lot, but that's the truth of the situation, yeah. Let's give an applause to Lisa. Thank you very much. And now we have, you can take a seat, thank you. Uh, now we have our first uh, participant, Valeria Pagarelova. <laughs> So before you start, uh, can you see timers? Great. Um, how do you feel? Nervous as always, but it's okay. It's good nerves, healthy nerves. I wish you good luck. Don't worry. And Valeria Pagarelova. Thank you. Have you ever recorded a voice note on your phone? and then played it back and listened to your own voice. Has anyone ever done that? Hands up. Have you ever felt like you sounded different? You didn't recognize your own voice? Some of us, okay. For me, that's also the case. And that's why I value feedback, because sometimes we cannot see from a different perspective. And I feel like, Lisa, your speech, perfectly highlighted the value of someone else's perspective for our own benefit and how we can improve because sometimes we can't judge ourselves very well. 
maybe we look at ourselves different. You cannot come out of your body and see yourself from a third person's perspective. And Lisa's uh, speech had an amazing structure of how her, at first her teacher was her first evaluator who she didn't quite listen to, but later she saw the value of that feedback. Then again, I believe at university, your professor, yes, okay, great. And then how she became the evaluator, how she started giving feedback, and then also her students. Perfect structure that showed us different experiences of evaluation and feedback and how we can apply it in our personal life. Lisa also painted an amazing picture. She used her voice to change perspective for us when talking as her teacher and as her response. When she replied, yeah, 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 I'm not listening, whatever. I don't care about your feedback. Her voice went higher in, in pitch, which is a very useful technique to create an image for the audience when we're up here on stage. The one thing that I would love to see more from you is to have more, I would say, tactical movements on stage. Because I often noticed this kind of swaying motion. And I would love to see more purpose with your body language. For example, if we go back to your first teacher, you, say, you started speaking as your teacher. Lisa! Listen, you're not motivated. And then when you are back as yourself, you can stand back over here. Yeah, 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 I'm not listening. Uh, just a little bit more dichotomy, the difference between the two characters. And um, I think the second thing I would love to see more from you is... Actually, you know what, that's it. <laughs> I, have, I thought everything else was great. You had engaging eye contact and you used vocal variety, you painted a picture and you had a great structure that completely led us throughout the whole story, the whole journey of receiving evaluation and how we can apply it in our own life. So just work on your body language and um, thank you very much for sharing your journey of evaluation with us. <laughs> Thank you, Valeria. A minute of silence for judges. The minute of silence is over. Uh, okay. <laughs> and uh, welcome our second evaluator, Martino Abracciavento. Uh, Martino, can you see the timers? Are you ready? Yeah. So welcome Martino Abracciavento. Dear fellow master, contest chair, Lisa, Thank you so much for uh, for, your, for your speech. Your speech tonight was, first of all, inspirational and motivational. Inspirational because you, first of all, you share with us your life experience. You brought to us all yourself on the stage tonight. You brought all your experience and how you reacted to this experience, how you uh, put them in, into practice. Uh, so, and it was motivational because actually you shared how to, to apply all this, all, all the, all these lessons that you shared, that you, uh, that you received in your life, that you learned 
So your speech is about lesson learned. So for, as I said, inspirational and motivational, both, most of all. The, um, the overall speech was very fluid. She, she went through all her experiences from the first uh, teacher, then your sensei at the university, and how you now apply these in your, in your life. So um, you had a very good um, vocabulary, I would say. And in that sense, it was very nice to hear, and um, it's, it was understandable perfect, perfectly. What I, something that I missed was a bit of pathos, right? A bit of pathos. Like, for instance, if I, if I were in you, in the moment, because the most important part of the lesson that I perceived the lesson was that when your teacher told, the, told you, uh, you need to make more effort, in that moment, I would have said, my teacher said, Lisa, you should make more efforts, right? Because this was a very important life of your life, moment of your life, right? So and in th that sense, you should highlight it as much as possible. And probably in that moment, you should have paused and said, I realized that after, right, at university, OK? That felt a bit, that's why, it, for, to me, it felt a bit theoretical. Even though it was a personal story, it felt a bit theoretical. It was like something that you heard from someone else. It was not really like a, actually your personal story, right? So, but, um, yeah, to summarize, the um, thank you for sharing your inspiration and motivational speech. Next time, bring all yourself to the stage. Try to bring all your emotions and in order to convey as much as possible and to share at the best your experience because your experience is wonderful and uh, this i think would be the best way to share it thank you thank you martino a minute of silence for judges please The minute is over. And please welcome our third evaluator, Anna Rubinina. Uh, do you see the timers? Are you ready? Good luck. Anna Rubinina. Dear Toastmasters and friends, I think there's an eternal debate on whether the critics or the positive feedback motivate us to, us to improve, right? And I think that Lisa tried to answer this question and was pretty sure that the positive feedback uh, is better, right? Okay, so let me start with the positive feedback. First of all, I liked the topic you, t uh, you took and Mm, the personal experience uh, that you shared with us. Uh, so uh, the second thing was the clear structure of your speech, because uh, you chose just three examples. Th the number three works pretty well in, in every situation, because it makes mm, the speech very clear in structure. And the third thing, I really liked your acting skills. When you imitate your childish voice, that really brighten up your speech. Now the points for improvement. 
uh, you chose a very important topic, though it didn't, to my mind, it didn't match the title and the conclusion of your speech. So the title was the lesson learned, but actually we heard just only about your experience, but not about the lessons. And especially in the ending, it was a little bit weak because I was waiting for the for the lesson that you will um, repeat them. What lessons um, did you get? Uh, but there were no these lessons in the conclusion. Mm, I would also recommend, as I really liked your acting skills in uh, at the beginning. Uh, probably you might have um, uh, include the imitation of your speech in the uh, the other parts, like as you were a teenager or when you are a professor, what voice you use at when you are giving lectures. And okay, so I think these are the, my points. Let me sum them up. Great topic, clear structure, good acting skills, and to challenge yourself next time, you can keep to the point of the keep to the point match it to the title and to the conclusion yes and work on your voice uh, variety and stay positive whatever feedback you get mm -hmm. thank you very much one minute of silence for judges please One minute is over. And now let's uh, welcome on stage our fourth participant, Andrei Kiselev. Andrei, uh, can you see our dearest timers? Are you ready? Andrei Kiselev. Hi. The speaker said. Uh, best way forward. You are very talented. I want to become better. I am professor. Hi, uh, everybody, dear Toastmasters, dear guests, Lisa. I was inspired. Uh, you are the winner, and I am the winner. I am going to win this contest, and thank you that your energy can help can help me uh, to make my dream comes true. Yes. Uh, let's start. The first, uh, you are the great. You are great for trying on uh, what I'm talking about. I sincerely felt uh, such strong uh, emotions listening to you. Uh, emotions when I was a child. Yeah. Uh, it's not typical for me. Uh, thank you for it. Uh, what is uh, well uh, next? Uh, I. Mm, I would like to uh, highlight uh, uh, mm, good one uh, is your portion of this on the stage. This is uh, something uh, uh, what makes uh, us focus uh, on your speech. Uh, next, we are all Toastmasters here. We are, uh, we are constantly uh, learning. Uh, by 
in the way. Uh, uh, I have uh, obviously prepared some advice for you. The first, uh, the first suggestion is uh, about uh, fabulous eyes contact with uh, the audience. Yes. Uh, next, uh, uh, I know you uh, can do it uh, brilliantly. Please uh, add even more emotions when you're talking about your childhood. Please. Uh, the next, uh, uh, I believe uh, you can do it amazingly well. Please uh, try to make more movements, body movements, when you are talking about uh, life periods of your periods of your life. Yes, the structure structure of your uh, speech uh, is uh, good enough. Uh, please uh, try uh, to make the end of your speech uh, more vibrant. Uh, summing up, you are great. You are superhero. Yes. Uh, great that your speech uh, contains the emotions. Please uh, add uh, a little passion in your speech. Please. Uh, your uh, speech has dynamics and uh, it has uh, not stopped. Uh, you are very talented. And now I am done. Thank you very much, Andrei. One minute of silence for judges. One minute is over. And now, please welcome on stage our fifth participant, Alexandra Fedorenko. Can you see our dearest timers? Are you ready? Good luck, Alexandra Fedorenko. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Lisa. Thank you very much for your wonderful speech. And let me, without any ado, just move forward to the evaluation. So first of all, I would like to thank you for the lessons that you've shared and for the examples that you've given. As you all could have noticed that uh, Lisa has shared two lessons with us. And she also used many devices to support her lessons. For example, Lisa's body language and the facial expressions were wonderful when she needed to show us something that she was talking about. For example, uh, to hold the audience's attention, uh, Lisa was using a very expressive facial expression. For example, yeah, 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 when she was listening to her teacher giving her some uh, advice. Or for example, the gestures. Uh, do you remember when Lisa was talking about actually creating the aim for herself? She would show, I actually got a goal. I knew after that where I wanted to go. So in this case, you could say that the facial expression and the body language was wonderful. However, let me uh, remind you the goal and the, uh, the goal of the project, which was to review basic methods of writing a speech and present a well-organized speech. So first of all, I didn't notice any notes before. However, I'm sure that Lisa has reviewed the basic um, methods of writing. As for the well-structured speech, that was quite well-structured. First of all, you could see all the necessary parts. For example, you could see the introduction, the main body, and of course, the closing 
uh, part. However, there were some things that I would like to point out, something that you could work on. For example, uh, you shared with us several lessons in the body, uh, spiced up with a couple of stories, which was also wonderful. However, the first lesson was a bit, how can you say, it was not pointed out well enough for me. So I cannot really remember what the first lesson was. Probably it was the fact that you need to be humble sometimes about um, your achievement, achievements. So you need to share them. However, you should not be too proud of them, so to say. The second lesson was more well shared with us. And that was to focus on the positive and highlight, highlighting the good sides of everything that people were doing. So the good thing was that not only you shared the lesson, you also gave us the example when you were sharing with us uh, the fact that you also applied this lesson in your own life. That would be so wonderful if you, Lisa, and everyone else, when you give some example, you would also spice it up with the story. I would really love to hear something like that with the uh, first one. And of course, try to repeat the lessons that you've learned to kind of make it a well-structured speech. Now, to make my well-structured evaluation, let me say that Lisa had beautiful body language and the facial expressions. However, she still needs to work on this structure. Good luck with your next speech, and thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. And now, moment of silence for judges.
As far as I understood, the moment of silence is over. So now we should welcome on the stage our uh, participants. So please uh, come here to the stage. Let's clap as loud as possible. And uh, now, <laughs> friendship friendship has won. So <laughs> now uh, we have an official moment because we uh, should uh, give uh, certificates of participation to everybody because the friendship won. And uh, <laughs> the first certificate is for Valeria Pagarielova. And also a ribbon for you. And a little uh, present. <laughs> Andrei Kiselev. Martino Abracevento. It's the yellow one. Anna Rubinina. And Alexandra Fedorenko. Let's take a photo. <laughs> and uh, you can stay here, please. <laughs> Don't leave me here alone on the stage. Uh, now we will have uh, a little interview while we are waiting for the results of uh, our contest. So let's start with Anna. Anna, you wrote that YouTube inspired you, right? So can you name your favorite YouTube channels and why do you like it? I, no, I can't. There are so many of them. <laughs> yes. Uh, <gasps> Politics. What you can say about YouTube? I think there are, you can find everything on it. Yes. Um, videos clips on any topic you want you can teach or oh, no you can learn <laughs> every no you can't you can, uh, teach, you can teach yes you can teach you can learn you can find different information on any topic you want uh, you can mm, laugh at some funny clips you can entertain yourself so everyone knows what youtube is yes and as it's the only site that you can use it without VPN, that's why I use it so much. <laughs> yes, yeah. no, no, no ads. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Valeria, you wrote about uh, drum theater, right? Yes. Uh, can you can you tell a little bit more about it? I believe what I wrote was drama than theater, and I forgot to put the comma in between. <laughs> so a little bit of both. I noticed recently that I have a flair for being very dramatic, uh, very big actions, very, very loud. I've been told to, to be quiet a few times. So this is something I need to work on. Um, but I think I, I just like when um, people express themselves freely. And that really inspires me to see people's real emotion in on a grand, big theatrical scale. And um, that is what inspires me and what I like to do in my free time, to be dramatic. <laughs> Good. Break the drama in your life. 
Alexandra, we know that uh, the Far East inspires you, but uh, what else inspires you? <laughs> The what else you got? <laughs> I know, right? Stop talking about the forest. You got sick and tired of it. Okay, let's talk about Karelia, maybe. No, actually, uh, so yes, I usually say nowadays that I'm the ambassador for the forest. However, if we are speaking about something that inspires me, that is actually people. And uh, let me tell you one story. Remember when... Um, we had to stay at home during the COVID times for like God knows how long. So I was uh, probably in some state of depression or something like that. And uh, one day my brother called me and told me, please come to my house and help me to pass my English exam. I'm like, I'm not going, you know, because that was the time when you had to apply for a pass or something. And I was too lazy because I was depressed. You remember? So, uh, in probably 15 minutes, he calls again and like, actually, it's my birthday today. Can you please still come? I'm like, shit, he has a birthday. I got to come. So I went uh, to his house. I actually had an opportunity to, to hug him, his wife, his wonderful kids. And when I came back, I didn't sleep the whole night. Can you imagine the whole night? Because I was pouring out the ideas for my work because talking to people after so long of not talking to anybody and hugging people after so long of not hugging anyone that actually opened up you know the stream of ideas the flow of ideas so it's actually of course traveling and the forest but people first of all thank you great uh, thank you for this wonderful story andre um... I can't imagine what question can I ask you, but uh, <laughs> let me let 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 ask. No, not about investments because I'm not uh, I'm not a professional. Uh, I, I do investments, but not uh, not not so much. So, how to be self confident? Because uh, as far as I understood, you are very self confident, and it's good. But how how to prepare for for it? You can try only. Uh, I started do it uh, thirty years ago. Thirty <laughs> years and years, and uh, now I love it. I I am very brave. Yes, and That's you. That, yeah. <laughs> my my in my anchor list was wrote about investments and BDSM. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, why uh, you don't ask about it? No. <laughs> Well, about investments. About about investments. Toastmasters has has some rules. Yeah. Ah, oh, uh, about investments. <laughs> okay, that is all. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. Let's uh, continue with uh, Martino. Um, I won't ask question in Italian because it's not uh, una domanda in italiano. Ieri hai detto che uh, amavo Mosca. Mosca è una um, grande città e tu ami Mosca. Uh, dimmi perché. Okay, should I translate? Should I translate? Ieri ha detto che amavo Mosca. Just kidding. <laughs> No, yesterday we were at the meeting with Zlata um, Ust and we were discussing like life and I said I'm Italian by the way and if someone doesn't know it and I'm here for a while, two, three years and I, she, and, um, and I, was, I was asked about if I like Moscow, I said I, I actually love it because of you know, many things like Moscow basically is you can do whatever you want at any time of the day and yeah, I love the people actually. Just to connect to, to Sasha. <laughs> why do you love Moscow? The the question was why you love I thought <laughs> I, I was the only one understanding the question. So I love Moscow because many of the people. 
because of dusha, dush, people are very dushevni, da? Dushevni. But uh, this this word dushevni is cannot be. You can just say it in Russian because it's not translatable to any language. I think, and the, you have to say it in Russian. It actually like comes back, comes all the way back to Dostoevsky and all the literature. So it's like you know just Russian. Uh, and you don't understand, people don't understand it and the, until they leave it here. I think they leave it for a while because at the beginning, probably Russian Russians, they, uh, they, they kind of, um, they look cold, but very warm inside because of the weather. But actually, eventually, eventually when you get to know them, they're very, they're the most wonderful person that you can meet. I, I did, uh, I traveled a while for a while, actually, and uh, yeah, I, Thank you for the welcoming. I'm sure that when you, if you return back to Italy, you will have Ru Russian Tasca. R Russian Tasca. It's a, uh, um, yes, ho homesick. It's a special Russian word. So, uh, dear dear participants, uh, thank you very much for this wonderful contest and for this wonderful interview. Uh, let's give uh, an applause for, for all of them. And you can take your seat. And now we have a very special moment. Uh, our chief judge came to the stage. And as far as I know, we have no time disqualification. That's good. And we have a uh, third, second, and the first place. So let's start with the third place. Are you ready? The third place, Martino Abracciavento. <laughs> and uh, now the second place is Valeria Pagarelova. And now the first place. Are you ready for the first place? Are you nervous? Alexandra Fidarenka. Yes. 
Thank you, thank you very much. I would like to thank all the team of judges, all the organization team. Also, I would like to thank all uh, uh, club uh, um, surgeons. <laughs> and uh, now the contest is over. So I will give the microphone to the president of, uh, of the club. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nastya. Uh, guys, uh, we are out of time, but we also have a TT table topic session on our agenda. And I would like to vote. What do you think? Should we proceed with table topics or should we reschedule? Uh, we have time here because uh, up to L, uh, 10, I suppose. No, 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 10, 10, 10. Mm. Yeah. Uh, no, it's a good idea. We can conduct it on. Why? Yeah, do you think so? Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, are we going to left it for after party table topics? I mean, because uh, our Alexander, our member, the member prepared carefully. What do you think, guys? So we should start. Oh, why not? Okay. So um, I ask Alexander, come on stage and please introduce this wonderful part. Thank you. So the most stressful part is over, but uh, the TT session is still about stress. Uh, is an exercise uh, which uh, teaches your body and your psychic to cope with stress and to uh, give a speech on an unknown topic, which you do not uh, prepare for in advance. Uh, but this is uh, different from real life by uh, the way that it is done in a, a caring atmosphere and a supporting uh, audience. So you can uh, give it a try and you uh, can give uh, get some experience of how to be unprepared in a situation, but still cope with it. Uh, the topic of today's TT session is uh, connected with the 14th of February, with the Valentine's Day. Um, I didn't feel much of uh, experience of this on, uh, on the streets or somewhere else. And I am such a person who, uh, if you ask me, uh, what do you think about the 14th of February, I will maybe respond that it's two uh, two weeks to spring so i'm not quite connecting it with uh, any celebration but still uh, i had um, some some funny situation connected with uh, the valentine's day today uh, i went to my usual coffee point to get some coffee during my lunch and they also told me that they have uh, great chocolates and i get uh, got to try them they were really wonderful, so I decided to buy them. And the uh, lady at the counter, she uh, reached me the chocolates and she looked at me with uh, such a face that uh, I thought maybe she's the only one person in the world who knows that today will be the date of my life. And I'm not, I'm not I mean, I don't know about it. Uh, so I have prepared several questions which are connected with dating, relationship, and any aspects of it. So if you are ready to... Um, so this is an opportunity for you to shine and uh, to give it a try for an unprepared speech. And um, uh, we, we understand now that uh, there are not many newcomers here today. Uh, but still, maybe for the oldies and for the particip participants uh, from other clubs, it will be interesting uh, to participate still. So uh, this uh, is technically uh, very simple. You are just going forward. You choose uh, your topic. Uh, you have 30 seconds to prepare, and then you will give uh, your speech for two minutes. 
uh, and at least one minute to, to score. Uh, so if uh, there is any volunteer, you are encouraged to participate. Yes, please. Yeah, please, you may choose. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you. Have a microphone. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Very impatient uh, table topic participants. If you could have a fictional character or as your Valentine, whom do you choose and why? Oh, la la. Okay. Well, probably just maybe I don't need a fictional character as I have a real one uh, live, but as he is very much up there, not in the skies, no, he, he lives right now. Even now he breathes. He, I don't know, maybe he's uh, celebrating his Valentine with someone next to him. Well, uh, it's can be anything that is happening to this person uh, right now. So he uh, can uh, as much be a fictional character as he is unreachable at all. Unreachable. He's a, an opera singer. Okay. And he is my, uh, inspires me much. So I think uh, till the very last day of my life uh, or and until the very uh, last day of his life as we were actually born on the same year. He's one month uh, el um, younger than myself. So I think all our lives will be uh, fictionally or non-fictionally together as he is going to perform concerts for myself only and I will be going to his concerts to watch him only. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was my sincere confession. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your personal story and the volunteers. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> What are, in your opinion, features and attributes of a romantic person? Do you consider yourself a romantic person? Hmm. I think it's not some prepared lists, you know, you don't have a checklist for romantics. No, it's not work like that. Like, of course, he should be prince on black horse or maybe on white horse, but... Uh, no, it depends on the energy in the pair because what depends what is good for one pair may be bad for the next pair you meet. And uh, I think the best romantic is who knows himself well. Uh, is a person who knows his personal boundaries, what he likes, what he dislikes. And by the way, there is a good book called Five Languages of Love, and uh, different uh, types of people have different languages. As for me, I like uh, hugging, and I like uh, words of uh, gratitude from my dearest wife. And uh, of course, I am a romantic. I like uh, creating songs with artificial intelligence, but... <clears throat> But it's not about, you know, the things, the list, it's about knowing yourself, it's about connecting with what you want, connecting with your heart, and listening to your heart deeply, and uh, when you listen to your heart, when you know what you really want deep inside, then you are a true romantic. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Oh, what is the best surprise you received or you'd like to be surprised 
with on Valentine's Day. As far as I realize the situation, I have uh, half a minute to get ready. Am I right? Um, okay, uh, I'm going to tell nothing surprising. I've never got surprises on St. Valentine's Day, but uh, I've um, put up with that because I'm a man of traditional uh, gender orientation. So my mission as a man to make surprises for ladies I like. So. So I've put up with that, and uh, I never get surprises, but uh, it's okay, because uh, in our country, it's the done thing, ladies wait for the surprises from the men. So my mission, I repeat, to make surprises for ladies I like. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, you're ready? Okay. Chocolates and roses of paintball. Roller coaster bungee jump. Sports bar or fancy restaurant. What's your favorite choice for a date? Of course, my favorite choice for a date is Toastmasters. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm here today. <laughs> uh, but uh, actually, um, I think it uh, does not matter where uh, you spend your um, St. Valentine's Day or where you spend any romantic date. But the most important thing is uh, who with you spend uh, this excellent day of your life. Because... <clears throat> Uh, for example, as uh, my husband has already mentioned, um, uh, it's important to know the language of love uh, of your beloved person. And my language of love is time we spend together. So for me, actually, it does not matter uh, where they go and what to do. The main thing is that we do it together. And uh, if they do it together, if they are invo involved in this activity together, uh, I'm happy. <laughs> so my best romantic date is to be uh, the person I love. Thank you. Thank you for the beautiful closing speech. I'm sorry to tell you that we have to close. Okay, one more. Please proceed. My question is, what do you hate most about dating? Please tell us about your worst date. Worst date. But actually, I would like to say that the worst thing is maybe in my life, I had no date. It's the worst thing, maybe. Because... Uh, there were some meetings, obviously, some kind of dates, but in my opinion or in my evaluation, it's not a date. Uh, so may, it means that uh, most of the dates which I had, which I experienced in my life, was all of them was the worst. <laughs> it's so funny. So uh, why I'm defining this uh, dating as uh, the worst because the person with uh, with whom uh, with who I met, uh, our uh, opinions uh, about life is not aligned with each other, and when they speak, 
the topic is not interesting to me. And when I speak, my topic is not interesting to him. It's some kind of complicated moments uh, which I just want to finish as much as possible I can. And so I would like to say that um, the most, uh, worst, uh, the worst uh, thing for the worst dating is not understanding each other's uh, taste or each other's not finding general topic. It's the worst thing. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, hmm? Just two minutes. I guess we have winner. Yeah, we have winner. And the winner today is is <laughs> okay. Natalie. Congratulations. Uh, so, do you like our meeting today? How was that? Yeah, great. And uh, we are pressed for time, as I mentioned already. And um, I would like to say that our next meeting will be held not here, guys, in the uh, the library. And after starting from March, we are going to just be here forever. <laughs> so yeah, it's a good news. I believe. And next time we will have uh, again contest, international speech contest. We don't have a lot of uh, participants and people who would like to participate. And I encourage you, please try, try. Uh, just to, yeah. But anyway, so I encourage you guys to participate in the contest because it's a great way to go to, I don't know, um, Daniel knows. Yes, <laughs> it's some uh, California uh, way. Uh, what else? Um, also, starting from April, we have next Toastmasters period. And now it's the time to start our saving <laughs> and maybe even start a renewal period. And we have our treasurer here, Valeria Pagarilova. Yeah, you can ask her how much <laughs> this <laughs> uh, So, And also we are a non-profit organization. And if you would like to donate one hundred or one thousand rubles you can do it right now and also you can ask Valeria the bank details account details and basically I suppose that's it thank you so much all the participants you are just amazing thank you so much Anastasia and thank you so much Daniel and all judges all people who take took place yeah, and um, let's meet next time, right? Not here again, Zil, and we are going to uh, post some announcement. 
and we have a tradition we are going to take photo we have our personal photographer <laughs> Uh, yes, and um, that's it. And also we have after party, by the way. Uh, usually we go some to some bar or whatever it is and uh, share our emotions. And today I think we have a lot of emotions to share, right? So come on stage and take water. <laughs> 